Welcome to another program showcasing to you activities from the state's assembly. It is also a platform where some engagements of the National Assembly are being presented from both chambers of the Senate and the House of Representatives. I am Abdullahi Aminu, your guide at this time. We are beginning the program with the recent confirmation by the National Agency for Food and Drugs Administration Control, NAFDAG, on the efficacy of the Avastin injection that allegedly led to blindness of 10 patients at the National Eye Center, Kaduna. It was part of submissions at the investigative hearing by the Aduhok Committee on health constituted by the Senate. The management of the Eye Center and National Agency for Food and Drugs Administration Control presented submissions before the Senate committee. They are on whether the said drug is fit for human consumption, condition in which it is stored, and the administration process which formed part of the answers contained in both NAFDAC and the Eye Center's assessment reports. We saw the 10 patients, and different explanations were given to us. You know, and the explanations given to us would not be complete for us to make our report you know, on this drug. Uh, you are in charge of control, in charge of drug control. Uh, what we could get when we got to Kaduna was that was that the drug was administered and then of course the potency or efficacy of that drug too was ascertained you know by the management starting from the chief medical director to the pharmacist and all of them that were involved you know in the administration of that drug you know on the patients and um, on the little things we were able to get the owners now was a new NAPDAC you know because they mentioned that the vial from which, of course, the drug was dispensed had been given to you. And um, the reason they are used, you know, for that reaction was inflammation, you know, that was caused by that drug. And thinking of it too, that the drug, if the efficacy was still guaranteed, you know, by the eye center that administered it, you know, there's no way we in the Senate were able to attest to you know, the efficacy of the drug, if we didn't uh, get you to do the analysis, you know, of what was contained in the drug. And that is the point we, we really want to, you know, to sort out with you. And we are assured that the hospital is carrying out their internal investigation. There and then we went and met one vial of the product that was remaining. And in line with the uh, international best practices, we took the sample of the product for laboratory evaluation to make sure that we confirm the quality. With respect to the source of the medicine, the medicine used at the National Eye Center Kaduna is not from Russia. The medicine is manufactured by Roche and it comes from Switzerland. It comes from the plant that NAPDAC registered. And routinely, any product that is imported by a marketing organization that will lance it, we test the quality before releasing for distribution and sales. So what we did was to take that vial and subject it to laboratory analysis. And we also fall back on the retention sample of that product that we have in the past to make sure that thorough analysis is carried out. And we'll conduct analysis. And the report on analysis revealed that the Avastin injection used conformed to relevant Specification. As scientists, I will go back and have a total review of our system just to um, not to run a system by default. Um, if you run a system by default, these things can happen before you, you just assume things are right. Um, we will do a comprehensive root cause analysis, look at our chain and then um, uh, and, uh, institute necessary um, actions that would promote safety for our patients. The point now, in the best interest of our citizens, how do we, well now, you know how it was taught, you the pharmacist, you tell us that day. Whether it was properly taught or not, now that this thing has happened, you will tell us it was properly taught. You will tell us. Tell us what you know, the only thing is to appeal to you, 
that subsequently, it's not a proper list of now that we have had this embarrassment. Two, who administers and the syringe that is used to administer? It is possible that the drug was right on its own. Is it possible that the syringe was good on its own? But the person who administered the drug, too, when you say person that administered the drug on the 10 patients, the same. The same, same person administered the drug. So any human error would have been given, would have been distributed to the internal okay. So these are possibilities. These ones are now saying the drug is perfect. You are now saying we have been using it, we have used it on 2,113 wow. patients. You know? Of course, what would have done, what the Senate came up with in one of the resolutions is that you suspend the use of the drug. Suspending the use of the drug, the alternative we have, just like you said, is a lot more expensive. more expensive. So the economics of it too have to take into consideration. The committee advised the center to streamline its drugs management activities from the point of delivery to the administration and storage. It is with a view to clear the minds of Nigerians on the allegations raised relating to the drug and it will remain the best eye center in the West African subregion. Kaduna State House of Assembly has received the first supplementary budget for the year 2019 amounting to more than 81 billion naira. The House, therefore, mandated its ad hoc committee on appropriation, budget and finance to examine the document for further legislative action. Ahmad Umar Kudang reports. Members of Kaduna State Legislature has reconvened on Wednesday for the consideration of first supplementary budget, among other issues. Speaker Amina Abla Ishegali read the executive message to the state lawmakers for scrutiny. The supplementary budget amounting to more than 81 billion naira is meant to execute capital projects as well as recurrent expenditure. A supplementary budget like this will definitely have to come. And the reason why it has to come is for the states to move forward and enable them to carry out various capital projects and also meet other needs of the people of Kaduna State. So this supplementary budget, I want to look at it that it came at the appropriate time when the government is faced with a lot of challenges of development and other things that the state required. The House therefore constituted an ad hoc committee headed by Ahmed Muhammad from Zari Kyo constituency to examine the supplementary budget and report back on Thursday. The House will also screen and confirm Zaid Abubakar as chairman Kaduna State Internal Revenue Service. In Kaduna, Ahmed Umar Kodeng, NTNU. Now to Oyo State House of Assembly, which is seeking for recruitment of more public school teachers in the state. It was contained in a motion as reported by our correspondent, Lukman Hassan. The motion urged the state government to regularize appointment of teachers employed by parent teachers associations in various schools across the state. Mover of the motion charged parents to support the efforts of the state government in providing quality and free education to students and pupils in public schools. Some of these uh, PTA teachers have been teaching in those schools for so many years, like nine, ten years, but they've been forced to leave the school. The other now is some of these teachers are core subject teachers. The House passed two bills after their third reading. The bills passed splitted the Ministry of Finance into two, wow. Ministry yeah. of Finance and Ministry of Budget and Planning, respectively. But now that has been split into two, we believe in the house that uh, with that we will have good rapport with the both ministries. The two bills passed, the Speaker noted, will be transmitted to the Executive for Assent in Ibadan. Lukman Hassan, NTN News. The Oyo State House of Assembly has also passed two bills into law. One of the bills is for the establishment of a ministry and training towards strengthening the state's economy. Lukman Hassan also reports. 
The two bills passed are Ministry of Establishments and Training Bill and Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development Bill 2019, presented the Ministry of Establishments and Training Bill 2019 before the Committee of the Whole House. The Chairman House Committee on Establishments noted that the bill as passed would enhance the quality of personnel and government agencies. The sense of the ministry is to advise the government on the uh, wages and salary that uh, the workers need to be, uh, uh, that may be agitating for. The bill on Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development 2019 will create more employment for youth and make other state food basket in the nation. This ministry needs have a lot to do. That's more the reason why we established this uh, ministry, so that they'll be able to focus on the attention of the farm produce and the welfare of our people. The lawmakers noted that the bills will further shore up the state economy. The two bills are the first passed yeah. by the House since its inauguration on June 10, 2019, in Ibadan, Lukman Hassan, NTA News. The Imo State House of Assembly has successfully screened and confirmed 17 commissioner nominees sent by the state governor, Emeka Ehedioha. Beatrice Angiem reports that former Minister of Foreign Affairs formed part of the list. The former Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Professor Viola Mwolere, was screened alongside 16 other commissioner nominees. She said she accepted the appointment to continue to give back to the society. I've been there can also be there to do more for them in a wider capacity. While eight of the nominees we are asked to take a bow for either being former national or state legislators or still outstanding in their contributions to the development of the state, others fielded questions from the lawmakers on how they will improve sectors of the state. Members of the House, led by the Speaker Chiji Collins, after considering the presentations at the Committee of the Whole House, confirmed the 17 commissioner designates. The House of the I hereby confirm them as containing this this order. Only two of the 17 appointees are women. In Owori, Beatrice Anyam, NTN News. Additional three commissioner nominees have been confirmed by the Ebony State House of Assembly. Chika Okorie reports that two remaining House members were also inaugurated by the House. After their credibility was put to test, the commissioner nominees were confirmed in compliance with the law. Also affirmed were Governor Omahi's nominee for Local Government Areas Advisory Committee, State Secondary Education Board, as well as coordinators of development centers. They promised to join hands with the state government to harass speedy human and infrastructural development. A commissioner nominee and uh, as uh, equally a uh, secretary to government, exactly. I am to I coordinate. The office of secretary to government is a hub, and for commissioner nominee, I don't know what will be my portfolio. So our priority as um, ESCO members will be to work in tandem with the vision of the state governor. To make sure that his transformation agenda is driven to the grassroots level, so that the people will be happier. On the issues of urgent public importance, member representing Isasat constituency Chris Osulo called for an inquiry into the extortion allegation of petty traders, mostly widows, at the Bakliki rice mill. They said they were asked to leave uh, the rice mill uh, premises because they refused to pay uh, the sum of uh, 100,000 naira each. So talk for the acting chairman of the rice mill to say the women should move out of I don't know whether that price will still be conducive. The competition that the matter and make sure that the issues are solved. The Speaker, a boy State House of Assembly, Francis Wifu, sworn in the remaining two of his colleagues. With the inauguration, the 24-member House is now complete. The House later adjourned to 5th October.
in Abakaliki, Chika Okori, NCA News. Now to other parliamentary issues on African continent where absence of effective parliamentary committees and frequent interruptions by non-democratic forces to carry out in-depth analysis on critical legislative matters are said to be the causes of setback to democracy in Africa. This was the position of speakers at the training by the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, NILS, in Abuja. Not even the rain that came in torrents on Monday morning in Abuja, Nigeria's capital, could stop landing job director committees of the Gambian parliament from justifying the reason for his being in Nigeria as a leader of the Gambian parliamentary staff. They are here to learn about the Nigeria's bicameral legislature in comparison with their country's unicameral system. The work of clerks, committee clerks, is almost the same. We, we can understand that the way we work and the way the clerks here also updates looks the same. But uh, we, will, we want to learn other new knowledge in terms of what national, the National Assembly of Nigeria is a big parliament compared to ours. So maybe there are some other best, uh, best uh, practices that they do uh, that, uh, that we are lacking. It made me think like we, I have been, I have been uh, left behind and now that we have been here, I will take the advantage with my colleagues to learn more from this training because it is very crucial. As we are the technicians of our parliament, and it is a young parliament right now, and it is a new found democracy in our country now. People want to make research. We want to learn every day to make sure we make the good, uh, oversight function so easier for them to work out. For me, this is my second training with Nils. Because I have been having training with them. The first training was on legislative drafting, which we have one week here at these premises. Now this training is about this committee secretariat, the role of committee clerks. And I think we have a we have a similar comparative according to the role of our parliament. And I think by the end of the day, if we start to engage each other, we will see most of these comparative according based on our constitutions. The technical session of the forum focused on standing orders and other operations of the Nigeria's legislature. The first issue that we raise is to find out whether such law complies with rules of practice and procedure or otherwise. If there is failure of compliance or non-compliance with rules of practice and procedure, it will be easy for a court of law to declare such law null and void on the grounds of non-compliance with rules of practice and procedure. I keep saying that the unseen lawmakers are the background to do the work. Let's see very well, bring it out for the approval, either at the committee level or at the plenary. It's to introduce participants to best practices in committee management and to share experiences. It is also meant to acquaint participants with practical guidelines on improving committee effectiveness. The training program underscores the importance of the study visit that will lead participants to a better understanding of effective strategies to improve performance of the committees in the two countries. Well, the wisdom of a bicameral legislature is to make sure that issues are properly uh, assessed and uh, are looked into before it comes to law. That is why one house look at it, the other house will look at it from another angle. By the time the law comes on board, we sure that you have done justice to such law and there is something that can last for long for the interest of the people. That's the beauty of uh, bicameral legislation. Africa country need to synergize. We need to cooperate to nurture the legislature in Africa. The quality of policy, the quality of law is aimed on the capacity of the legislature is in on the capacity and effectiveness of the committee. Here, we come to the end of this package. On behalf of the production crew, Abdullah Aminu saying bye for now.